today we are switching our attention to culinary practices still under arts and popular culture within the Caribbean studies syllabus. One of the first things that we will look at when we are talking about the culinary practices as usual is the definition of the term. So when we look at culinary practices within the Caribbean, we are specifically looking at the methods used to prepare or in the preparation and consumption of different foods that are distinct or unique to cultural or ethnic groups. Now, when we examine the culinary practices of the Caribbean, we recognize that they are wide and they are varied and they are based on those who were brought here by the Amerindians, we could talk about the Europeans, we talk about the Africans, East Indians, and Chinese influences. Generally, we can also note that Caribbean food is hot and it is spicy. Um, and this is usually the influence of the Indian and the African cooking. Many dishes are similar across the Caribbean region, but the preparation of these dishes are different, dependent on the islands that you visit. Now, if I look at Mohammed and how, as in Jennifer Mohammed in Caribbean Studies, and how she examines or she looks at certain foods across the Caribbean region, one of the things that she points out is that there are differences from one territory to another based on how the foods are prepared and how they are served. And this also may have origins in the colonial times. Like, for instance, rice and peas is a Caribbean staple. However, red beans and rice of Jamaica is completely different from the national dish of Haiti. Or pigeon peas and rice or black-eyed peas and rice in the Southern Caribbean is completely different from that of Haiti. Haiti. Now, Caribbean cooking is famous for its hot and spicy dishes. You have your curries, you have your jerk pork, you have your escovitch fish, you have your chutney, you have your pepper pot, and all of these would have been influenced by the indigenous people. You would have also been influenced by the indigenous persons would be your corn beer, your, the art of cooking wild meat pepper pot soup. Um, the difference with the pepper pot soup today is that hot sauce is used in many of the dishes. Then there's also the use of roots and tubers. And then something else that we have also picked up is the making of bread from the cassava. Another staple that we would find across the Caribbean, which has a British influence, is salt fish. Here we have um, salt fish with aki. We have fish cakes. We have salt fish with bakes. And we also have salt fish with um, some salad at the side. This became major staple within the Caribbean. And it is because... The British would import the salt fish to feed the slaves. Today, this has developed into regional variations such as fried fish cakes, as seen in Barbados, salt fish and dumpling, salt fish palau, salt fish acre of Trinidad. Then you have salt fish and roast breadfruit, as you will see in St. Vincent. And then Akia saltfish as seen in Jamaica. We also have the African influence where you would see dishes like pudna sauce and cowheel soup, um, which basically would have been developed from the discarded animal parts like chicken feet, pig feet, pig snout, fish head, cowheel, 
goat belly. Basically, these are the things that would have been fed to the slaves. And therefore, we would say that they have a long regional heritage. Basically, the, the main or what we would say the base of these particular foods um, can be seen more in colonial times. Then we have the East Indian influence. Now, in the East Indian influence, you would have gone the curries, um, pepper, lentil peas, various herbs and spices that are widely used in cooking. Um, like the dalpuri roti, um, you would also have your doubles and you will have your your hot curry and, and curry chicken and, and so forth. And that was the East Indian influence. Now, also the Chinese would have been immigrants into the Caribbean. And we all know that you have your stir fry. So you have your stir fry noodles and you have your stir fry rice. Um, they would have introduced those into the Caribbean along with your Chinese cabbage and, and anything else that they would add or other vegetables that they would add to the Chinese food. So that is the influence of the Chinese. So if we really look at it and look at the food that exists within the Caribbean, we can recognize that most of the foods that we eat are foods that would have had an influence from the groups of persons who would have come into the Caribbean and who would have settled within the region. Basically, our taste, our culinary practice comes from or has developed from these different groups that have been introduced into the Caribbean. We have recently, within the last 50 years or so, we have also caught up with the modern trends in food preparation, um, especially those of North America. Um, as more people work and as more people have little time to be in the kitchen for food preparation, we have also recognized that there is an increased demand for the fast food. And as a result of this increased demand for the fast food, you have also a case where not only are persons eating these things more than anything else but you're also having um, persons freezing cooking and freezing their food um, for future um, consumption so you don't have persons cooking every day um, yes they, they are influenced by the fast food, but they're also influenced by what the North Americans would do, which is cook their food um, on, let's say, on Sunday, cook for the whole week and then freeze their food so that when they, they're ready, they take that down and they thaw that out and that becomes their meal for the day or for the week or whatever. Now, we too have influenced um, our metropolitan countries or the metropolitan countries of the world in that West Indies who have migrated to these countries have been responsible for the expansion of the local cuisine and the creation of the West Indian markets and restaurants in those areas. Um, so you have things like rum, you have things like the Agostura bitter, you have things like the pepper sauce and jerk seasoning and so forth becoming a major part of the market, um, the food market, the, the culinary practice within the North American market. What we also recognize is over the years, the West is also very important in Caribbean social and cultural life through the modern labor saving gadgets, appliances, pre-cut products of the Western countries, which are influencing Caribbean culinary practices. Caribbean homemakers have relentlessly adapted and they have changed traditional recipes to fit the limited time at their disposal. So no longer would you find a ham that is cooked from scratch. That is put in the pan to boil outside in the yard for hours on end as was done over a generation ago. Now you have hams coming pre-cooked 
and with precise instructions for baking. Cakes are not beaten by hand anymore. You get your pre-mixed cake in the box. Um, that's a common grocery item. Home baked bread and coconut bake lose out from these store bought varieties. And many of the other traditional dishes, unfortunately, are no longer cooked regularly in Caribbean homes. You would have that those traditional dishes are sometimes reserved for Sundays or on special occasions. That brings us to the end of culinary practices within the Caribbean. Some of the things that I want you to remember with regards to culinary practices within the Caribbean would be one, the, the definition of it, methods used to prepare or consume various goods. The second thing that I would like you to remember, please, is that your culinary practices are influenced by the persons who would have settled within the Caribbean. Each of them would have influenced their culinary practices over the years. The other thing that I want you to remember is the fact that even though you have certain foods at the same uh, across the Caribbean region, it is a case where these foods are not necessarily prepared in the same way.